This is bizarre. The last time I rode this board, it had Rojas. On yes, it. It had, it's had Rojas on it forever. That's like been the Roja board. Yeah. So to ride something that doesn't have all that axle offset and isn't really aggressively divey. <laughs> and also, it doesn't have the, the bushings because it's so loose yeah, right now. Yeah, but it's, it's surprisingly rideable. Yeah, so it's... It feels like the deck swings when you turn. So it's like the, the, the top of the deck shifts further inside. Yeah, so that's just because of the, the height of the roll axis. Okay. Uh, you know, because you, yeah, the height of the deck is away from the roll axis. It's not like, it's not doing it because it's like a surf skate truck. And if you would remove bushings from other skates, would you get a similar effect or? From, from Rojas, yeah, I mean, if there was mechanisms there to hold it all in place, yes. Okay. So but I mean, this is pretty normal then. Yes. Right. Um, except for the fact if you took the bushings off and let other trucks do that, they'd fall apart. <laughs> <laughs> so that is one of the unique features. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it feels. It's, yeah, it, I've, I've ridden it like that on, not on that board yet, but on the, um, on my mini boards. Now, what are the angles? It's been, I, I can't remember. It's been too long. But it does have the turnier front and the less turny okay, rear. so it is asymmetric. Yes. I was going to say, it definitely feels more turnier in front. But, without pushing, it's not too bad. Nice. Yeah, it, it resists wanting to pump. Yes, and that's because it's, it's rakeless. That's a big part of the, the, the rakelessness is but it's, is it's, yeah, it's just got, it's just got that, that uh, spice missing out of it, right? Yeah, but I can tell you, it's it it like, zero resistance. This is steep, narrow, and, and it's, and, it's tracking how, it's tracking how you want. Yeah. And it's it, not, it's, it's not zero resistance. There's a little in the rear, okay. but it's, it's, a, it's pretty ineffective. It's, it's really loose. It's surprisingly, uh, rideable. <laughs> yes. As you fall off. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And surprised how loud this road is. Oh yeah, this is probably made from the all the granite. Ah. Like fell off of these mountains a billion years ago. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> You're making those wheels hum I, without any bushings on it. I was going to say, I am kind of shocked at how stable it rides for having no resistance. Yeah. Because this is how a normal skate truck would work, right? Yes. So this is, this, this would operating with the same ge geometries basically as a, uh, a rakeless RKP. RKP, okay. Yes. Rakeless, that's right. Yeah, so there's not that many rakeless RKPs out there that aren't precision, but there's a handful. They're used almost exclusively on the rear of trucks, right? Isn't that typically where you'd run a rakeless? And that's where I would want a rakeless. Okay. I, I mean, I think we'd both- So what we, about we, luge? Where would luge go? With these trucks, yeah, or, or or just rake, luge in or, general? Yeah, like with the rake. With the truck. rake, I guess would um, be attracted to a rakeless truck. Um, I'm not sure. I think I think you might want rake with the luge because you don't have as much control. It's harder. You can't lean over as far on the luge. Your your range of motion is small, so having the tipping action might allow you. Cause you know, the TKPs and the rake is tippy, right? Yeah. So having that tippiness might allow you easier control of what the luge is doing. Cause oh. I mean, the struggle with the luge isn't going straight. <laughs> it's, it's engaging the turns hard enough. Yeah. Huh. So what I would like to get from you is um, 
what the questions you think I if so I want I still I'm trying to make a video that's explaining these trucks right yeah so what questions do you think I should be going into that looking to answer well the first one that comes to mind because I, I remember this from one of our previous conversations is how to introduce the axle offset yes which <laughs> based on our our primitive mind experiments would involve a pretty good amount of engineering to, to be able to, I mean, to it's it's i mean it's kind of straightforward but kind of a little more different yeah it, it would just it's just adding more there, there's no elegant way yeah you do you yeah it, you definitely have to add it on as like a component yeah whereas <laughs> that's kind of what's elegant about one of these tkps is it in order to get all that axle offset it's just there there yeah it, yeah that's the most convenient location to put the axle relative to the bushing in the pivot cup and so you get up you end up with offset yeah like just by accident whereas with this design it actually is the exact opposite you have to go out of your way to get it yeah mm -hmm. all of the all of the components line up just to make a rakeless truck all right is rakeless the correct term that's the term i've been using okay. rakeless <laughs> i guess okay here's my next question could you eliminate the spherical bushings and use just some kind of a off the shelf skate bushing <clears throat> no that's a the, the, yeah but that's a good question you I, could I go that because we, we we were playing that game also with the Rojas. Yes. To eliminate that thrust bearing. Yeah. To find you, some. You could play around, and you could replace all the spherules with bushings and bushing seats. But then you're losing the spherical precision, and you're holding it together with bushings again. And with um, how many joints is there? That's five joints. That's a lot. That's that's a lot of. That's ten bushings to make all those joints. Oh, you're saying even, even I mean, yeah, you could you could get rid of all the spherules that way. Oh, okay. But it'd be it'd be a pretty crazy set to do that. But you could you could maintain these ones, but replace the main. Yes. Spherical you could re you could definitely replace this with just a traditional, a bushing seat. Just get rid of the spherical, and you can even change the orientation if you wanted, so that it's a, a, nor a more typical bushing orientation where you're you're using this kingpin, right? You could do something like that. Okay, and here's here's my other just kind of random question. How many different configurations are there for that truck? Oh, okay, that's a good question. <laughs> I can't answer that right now. Because as far as I can tell, I mean, a TKP <laughs> has, it's, it's single, it's eight conversion, yeah. I mean, you can you can obviously change the the geometry with wedges, mm -hmm. and you can change the bushings, and that yeah. in some way might be able to change the height of things, but it's it's really minimal, and you're doing it with different washers and mm -hmm. tall bushings versus you know standard, and then cones, but that's only changing just the way it engages. And Feels. Yeah, that's just, I mean, that's not changing the geometry and the mechanics, as you right. can show. Like, this is no bushings at all, <laughs> and that's not changing any of the geometries. <laughs> and I realize that, you know, there, it's probably more of a spectrum. You yes, know, you're, you're but you want, I want to, you want me to quantify it. Yeah, I mean, how many unique configurations are there for that one Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. I like that then, one. That would be d multiplied by two between the front and the rear. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that would really provide you with kind of a, <laughs> a uh, reality of how many possibilities there are for this single design. Yes. Yep. Which to me is, is quite fascinating. I can't even imagine how different. That's, a, that's, a, that's a pretty big part about what that's all about. <laughs> I mean, the fact that it. It's it's statically mounted to the deck like that, but you can change base plate angles, yes, height, height, and mm -hmm. I mean I guess you can change axle width too, right? Is that also? Um, 
to a smaller degree. You have to replace I mean, the, the whole axle. Yeah, axle. so the way it is right now, I've got the two axle sizes. I only brought the one. But yeah, you can you can just swap out that whole axle. And I, I think this is kind of in the same vein as the uh, axle offset. Mm -hmm. But I'd say that one of my largest questions that I have about this is can you create a skateboard truck that would have raising center of gravity? Yes! Yeah. That, I think, is another one. I think you'd have to... Yes, I think you could. <laughs> but we'd have to go into some some pretty... Uh, what, what do we call it? Sensitive... Yeah, there'd be some... <laughs> Some patenting issues you need to navigate. Yeah. And then also just the mechanics of it, how to actually pull it off. Mm -hmm. But I feel that because of all the <laughs> configuration potential, there's there's got to be some way where you actually would create a raising center of gravity. Isn't yeah, it? I, th I think the easiest way to, to go about that and the way I would do it coming from OP land would be getting it into the spherical. Cause so I think, yeah, I think replacing that spherical with a different mechanism that has the raising center built in. Cause obviously that spherical can't do it. Right, I mean, that's, that's kind of the crux right there. It's like, mm -hmm. it's the center of the universe and, mm -hmm. but I mean these, would allow any range of motion within that fixed distance. Yes. So I feel that there's there's probably some way to accomplish it. Yep. All right. That wrapping that up. That's that's our uh, that's our thoughts yeah. for those uh, initial initial in, thoughts. Initial thoughts of those uh, N, the NKP the no kingpin trucks. It's a it's a pretty fascinating product. Again, the, the adjustability of it is what seems so fascinating. Mm -hmm. And I, I get it now as to why an e-skate would be attracted to it, because it gives you all this real estate to mount electric motors. And oh yeah, real estate's a big deal. And, you, and, and you've got all sorts of, not just, not just like physical real estate, but like tinker real estate. Yeah. You know, you've got Points all these, mount things, you've got all ready. these accessible threads to use, and yeah, and yeah. As as you change your your setup, whether it's wheel diameter or motor size, you can adjust the truck to accommodate it mm -hmm. without having to replace, you know, large pieces like base plates and hangers and you know all the strange bolts. You can just kind of reformat it. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I think it's uh, it's fascinating, and I, I I just love that Riptide has uh, has hopped in to help out. It just shows that it's another application for for urethane. Yeah. So yeah, I'm excited to see what uh, what comes of it all. Now we got to try out dirt boards. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, you got to get me an over and out first. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, this is longboard technology over and out. Right. <laughs>